Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start talking about chemical equations. We see all the binary um, up there. Hopefully we figured out what that means by now. Um, the quote that we have is that everyone is in a hurry to be the one, but no one wants to be the zero that adds value to the one. So this is just an introduction into chemical equations, uh, how to write them, and everything else. So what we're trying to learn, uh, students will understand the role of products and reactants in a chemical reaction. Uh, basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to know what products are, know what reactants are, how to find them in an equation, um, and how they function in a chemical reaction. Uh, number two, students will use chemical symbols to express chemical reactions. So not only are we going to use the symbols from the periodic table to express our chemical formulas, but there's other chemi chemical symbols that we're going to learn um, that are used specifically in chemical equations. Uh, number three, students will be able to write word equations from descriptions of chemical reactions. So basically what that is is we're taking a paragraph or a description of a whole reaction and breaking it down into a word equation. And then number four is students will be able to write chemical equations from word equations. So after we take it from the paragraph into the word equation, we then will be able to take it from the word equation into the actual chemical equation that we use. Now, from the lab, we said, you know, we have all, we went from binary to Spanish to English, okay, why all the work? Well, it's to show us and represent what actually happens when we write a chemical equation. Now, in chemical reactions, usually what we get is we get an overwhelming number of variables. There's a lot of things going on. And when we describe a chemical reaction, like in a paragraph, it takes up a lot of space. Okay, what chemical reactions and chemical equations what they do, uh, those equations help us organize information and quantify information. So basically it makes everything nice and neat uh, so we can see what's going on in the chemical reaction on a piece of paper. So the pieces of the puzzle. So there's a lot of different pieces that go in to make a chemical equation. Um, so the, one of the first ones that we have um, are reactants. Now what reactants are, they're the original pieces of the puzzle. So that's what we start with. Okay, It's what we start with, it's what we have in the beginning. The product, those guys are the finished product. It's what we have left over after the reaction takes place. Okay, And then we also have catalysts and inhibitors. Um, it's the number of people working on the puzzle basically. Um, it can speed up or inhibit a reaction, so speed it up or slow it down. Uh, they're not really involved in the actual products or reactants. They just have a lot to do with just the speed of it. Now, other pieces of the puzzle are the symbols. Now, and this is basically like we're trying to find the corners and the straight edges when we're actually putting a real puzzle together. Uh, the symbols in the chemical equation are not just for the elements. So it's not just in the chemical formulas that we find on the periodic table. We need to know all of these. Um, and these are great uh, basic level questions, definition type questions. Um, anytime we see an arrow, uh, we know that it means yields or produces. Uh, when we see a single arrow like we'd have right here, that means that the reaction uh, only goes one way, okay? that it only goes forward, it cannot reverse. And then when we see the double arrow here, that would be a reversible reaction. So the reaction go forward and then it can reverse itself and go back. So the reactants will produce products and then those products themselves can then become reactants and go back. Um, and this is what is usually in the middle. It separates out um, our products and our reactants. Um, so anything after a chemical formula, um, so say that we have iron, Fe, and if we see an S by it, that would be solid iron. Um, if we saw, instead of an S, we saw an L, that means that we would have liquid iron. If we didn't see an L and we saw a G, that means we have gaseous iron. And if we didn't see a G and we saw this, and we've probably seen this before, a Q, that means aqueous. And really good definition, I'd probably write it down here. Aqueous, all it means is that it's dissolved in water. Uh, so we take something like salt, say sodium chloride, and we put it in water. We say that it dissociates or becomes aqueous. 
um, it's just dissolved in water so it's a solution then okay above the arrow so if we see a triangle above the arrow like we see right here that means that heat was added to the reaction okay so heat was necessary for the reaction to take place or if we see a catalyst like here we see that we have potassium iodide okay i if we see this uh, above the arrow then that means that that's the catalyst in the reaction and then anything in front of the chemical formula so say we had our fe right here say we had the number two in front of it we call those coefficients and those are going to represent our mole ratios and we'll talk a lot about that in the next unit okay other pieces of the puzzle we have to have evidence Okay. Evidence of a chemical uh, reaction can actually be taken place. So it's one or more of the following. Um, so if we see heat or light, um, we see formation of gas bubbles, formation of precipitate. Um, I would just kind of make a note right there. A precipitate, all it is, is just means that there's a solid that forms. You start to see a solid form in a solution that there wasn't a solid before and then we see color change um, normally you need to see more than one of these uh, something greater than one of those pieces of evidence to make sure that a chemical reaction has taken place so our first step word equations now word equations basically what they are is they're taking the big paragraph and they're breaking it down into manageable chunks um, basically you can think of it as taking that big huge long binary code and breaking it down to Spanish it's not what we're going to actually use in the end but it breaks it down into something manageable in, instead of all those ones and zeros so this right here would represent a word equation we see that we have hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas produces dihydrogen monoxide liquid so basically this is the combustion of hydrogen and what happens is when you combust hydrogen you produce water and you can see it down here um, written here and written here uh, basically it's just showing us what's actually happening uh, main difference between these two and this I'll mention here again I'll probably mention it a lot are diatomics we see that we this was H and O and this went to H2O2 because we can't forget our diatomics um, when those elements exist by themselves and they always exist paired to one of themselves so let's look at an example it says a scientist takes a piece of magnesium metal and heats it in a Bunsen burner the strip of magnesium metal produces large amounts of light so we see that there's light after the light is produced the Bunsen burner is turned off the magnesium continues to produce light until the metal is completely gone leaving behind a very white powder write the possible word equation based on the reaction so we're writing the word equation so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take out the pieces so we see that magnesium we have that it's just a strip of magnesium so we would just write magnesium okay and that's the first thing that we have in the reaction okay now it's magnesium and it was heated with the Bunsen burner so we see that that's happening so now what we see is that what is it reacting with well it's burning okay you can think of it as burning so it's reacting with the oxygen in the air so plus oxygen okay, and produces this very white powder so basically what happens is we see that the magnesium and the oxygen they're bonding they're bonding together and so basically it produces a compound something completely different than magnesium and completely different than oxygen which would be our magnesium oxide so we would just write and magnesium bonded to oxygen and we get this very manageable now the magnesium metal um, since it was we can put that it's a solid the oxygen was a gas and it produced a magnesium oxide which was a solid it was a powder and heat was added in the reaction so to take place next example it says pure distilled water and potassium hydroxide uh, the catalyst are placed in a beaker with a positive and negative wire the wire is connected in an electrical source 
and gas forms on the end of the wire. Okay. Write the possible word equations for this scenario. So when we're looking at this one, what we have is we have our pure distilled water and we see that the wire is connected to electrical source and gas forms so it's pure water the potassium hydroxide is just going to be a catalyst so what's in water well we see we have pure distilled water so it would just be water okay and what water is is just it's dihydrogen monoxide but we'll just write water okay and our electrical current is added to it and it produces gas on both electrodes so what is what is water made of well hydrogen and oxygen so we would just have hydrogen plus our oxygen okay and those are gas so we put gas there for both of those and water's a liquid so we could just put an L for that and that would be our word equation.